Oh, that's not good. The time has come. Inside this bag, we have two brand new iPhone 15 Pro Maxes. Why? Well, every year, Apple seems to be adding more and more anti-repair tactics to their devices. Last year, they added removable back glass to the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus. They claimed that this change would make the device more repairable, which in theory it should. But what they failed to mention is that they serialized the iPhone's flash, rear microphone, and wireless charger, which is attached to the back glass. Essentially, meaning they serialized the back glass. Swapping those parts from another device or with aftermarket parts means that photos taken with flash will no longer save to your camera roll. The year before that, we discovered Face ID failed to work completely when replacing the front display with another on the iPhone 13 Pro. Due to intense backlash on that decision, Apple retracted it and allowed Face ID to work as usual. In this video, we're going to be unboxing, opening, swapping the parts of the iPhones in the quest to find what unrepairable measures Apple has made this time around. The hope is that we find nothing, but uh, knowing Apple, that's quite unlikely. It's time to unbox these, but first we got to put on gloves because I don't want to get my fingerprints everywhere. We'll remove both iPhone 15 Pro Maxes out of the box. And we did only get blue iPhones, unfortunately, because that's all we could get our hands on. We'll remove all four tabs and get that satisfying drop. God damn, that is beautiful. We'll do the same with the second iPhone 15 Pro Max. And there we go. Take a look at that five times optical zoom lens. You can really see the depth. We'll pick up our brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max and get that satisfying peel. This phone does feel way better in my hands. The curved edges are really something. It honestly does feel way lighter than the 14 Pro Max as well. Obviously that's due to the titanium. If we take a look over here, we can see the brand new action button. And honestly, I can't wait to use it. We'll do the same with the second iPhone 15 Pro Max. And inside the box, of course, we have our instruction manual, our SIM ejector pin, our stickers, and we also have our charging cable, which is now USB-C because iPhone 15s only use USB-C. Thank you, Europe, for doing that. Of course, there is no charging cube because Apple. But if you do want a charging cube, take a look at this. This is Ugreen's Nexode RG, and it's the cutest charger I've ever seen. So this is a 30 watt fast charger, and I think we can just... There we go. This 30 watt charger uses GAN technology, which basically means you get the same charging power as one of the bigger chargers with better heat dissipation and in a smaller body. You can see this is pretty tiny. That combined with its thermal guard protection ensures your device that you're charging never overheats or the charger never overheats. So when you plug this in, the charger will make specific faces based on how charged your device is. So when it's recharging, it'll make this face. When the recharge is complete, it'll make that face. This little 30 watt charger can charge the iPhone 15 to 50% in just 30 minutes. Or if you are looking for more charging power than 30 watts, they also have a 65 watt charger. This more powerful charger has three ports and can charge an iPhone 15 to 60% in just 30 minutes. You click the link in the comments or the description and pick one of these up for yourself. They're actually really nice. Now we'll go ahead and turn both of the phones on and go through the setup. Because they're so close to each other, it keeps trying to swap contact information, so I'm gonna move them a little bit away from each other. Now that we have both phones set up and on the home screen, it's time to quickly label them. We're going to place some blue tape on the one to my left and place some red tape on the one to my right. Once we have the devices open, we'll also be labeling the actual board itself so that we don't get them mixed up. There we go, the phones are now labeled. It's time to open these up and swap boards. The first thing we need to do is cook both the iPhone 15 Pro Maxes. While the iPhone 15 Pro Maxes are cooking, if you guys want any of these tools, we have all of them listed on my website. Go check that out. We also have the PRG mat in the description. If you guys want a repair like me, this is how you do it. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is done cooking. We are gonna have to remove this little piece of red tape, which is why I put both, because this tool is gonna require us to suck on the back and the tape will disturb that. We'll remove this. Now we can hit this phone with an unscrew. 
When it comes to iPhones, you can always rely on them having two pentalobe screws at the bottom. A cool little Easter egg I did notice is that the phone's model number is actually inside the charging port, which makes it easier to identify. So now that we have the phone nice and cooked, we have to decide which way we're gonna try and open it from. The renders from Apple's event indicates that it opens from the front and the back with most of the internal components being visible from the front, so that's where we'll start. We'll slide this into our universal display remover. I'm expecting the display to be thinner than ever this year, so it's imperative that we are careful while prying on it. So now all we have to do is apply some pressure over here to get it to lift. We are going to be using a heat gun as well, just to make sure that it stays nice and hot. Very soon, you're going to see the display at the bottom starting to lift up, which is exactly what we want. So this process can take anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour. Once the gap is big enough, you can use some plastic prying cards and try and get under the display and then slice that adhesive off. You can see the gap just expanded. That's because it's no longer tethered to the actual frame. It looks like part of the frame is actually stuck to the body of the phone. Um, We'll have to work around it and hope the display doesn't get damaged as a result. Looks like we successfully got it removed, thank god. Very nerve wracking. The display is off the actual frame now so we can remove it from the display remover. We'll add some more heat and it should come off in a couple seconds. I'm not gonna lie guys, it's really hard to get this display off without breaking it. It's so thin. Okay, we're about to see what the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max looks like on the inside. Here we go. Three, two, one. Open it up. Okay, interesting. It's as beautiful as ever. Very different from what I'm used to, that's for sure. So we have our massive front speaker, our front camera assembly with our Face ID modules, the very large back cameras this year. That's one, two, three. Our motherboard over here. There is no A17 sticker this year. We have our Taptic engine with little tiny metal things. I'm not really sure what those are called. The same thing with the loudspeaker. Of course, we have our USB-C port and we have our battery. That was intense. It's time to do it all over again with the other phone and then we'll swap the motherboards. A few moments later. The frame has come off on this one as well. I think that's gonna be an issue going forward. Now we can open it up and there we go. We have both of these open. So the first order of business is to remove the displays from both of these devices. But before we swap the motherboards, I need to investigate what Apple means by removable back glass because so far this opens the same way as the iPhone 14 Pro does. But does this open from the back? Let's, uh, let's find out. We're gonna hit this phone with an unscrew. Now it looks like we can remove this shield here. Now we can disconnect the battery. There's a little positive and negative terminal on the battery this year. That's pretty cool. Disconnect the screen. And there we go. That is our iPhone 15 Pro Max display. It looks like the proximity sensor on this and ambient light sensor are actually here, which we've never seen before in past generations. Quite a busy phone, but beautiful as always. Apple is great at making their internals very presentable. Anyway, let's take a look at this removable back glass. But before we do that, we gotta put some stickers on this board because we wanna make sure everything is color coded so nothing is confusing. Now that we have everything labeled, and I mean everything, we wanna take a look at that back glass. So this is gonna be a little bit harder to do. We're just gonna speed this up real quick, but we're gonna have to pry off the back glass and see if it even comes off in the first place. And if it does, what secrets lie within? Now we can open it up. What the hell is this? This is so different from anything I'm used to. This is where the wireless charger would sit and the wireless charger is over here. That's the coil. We have the rear microphone and flash right over here. We'll hit this phone with an unscrew. We'll disconnect the back glass and there it is. Now it's time to quickly do the same thing with the other phone 
and then we can go on ahead with the actual motherboard swap to find out what Apple made unrepairable this year. Okay, now that we have both phones fully open and fully labeled, it's time to do the board swap. So we'll start off with the red and we're just gonna go through and disconnect literally everything we can see, just one by one. And it does look like there is a flex cable running from the motherboard to this area, probably for some sort of antenna. So we may have to remove the battery if we can't disconnect it without, well, removing the battery. We're just gonna remove the battery anyway, just to be safe. I'm just gonna apply some isopropyl alcohol. I'm not gonna bother with Apple's stupid pull tabs because I hate them. The nice thing about having removable back glass with a big ass hole in the back of the phone is that I can actually just push on the battery. Look at how beautiful that is. Wow, I've never been happier. Now I can just pull it off. Okay, so that might not be a problem like I suspected, but really not an issue that I took off the battery. Let's continue on. We'll hit this motherboard with an unscrew. We can begin to wiggle the motherboard out. We don't wanna force anything. It looks like it is coming out and there are no flex cables attached, which is perfect. We'll put this aside and we'll do the exact same thing with the blue iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now that we have both of the motherboards removed, what we're going to be doing is basically just a simple swap. By doing this swap, we're basically simulating swapping every single component in the phone. Because Apple continues to serialize components, we'll be able to quickly find out what Apple did to make the device unrepairable this time, if they did anything at all. And there we go. We have the red motherboard with the blue phone internals, and we have the blue motherboard with the red phone internals. We'll boot both of these phones on. And we have the Apple logo on both. We have both of the phones booted on. As soon as we enter the passwords, we're probably gonna get bombarded by the non-genuine messages. Let's see what shows up. Important camera message, nice. Face, face ID issue detected, that's pretty standard because we swapped face ID parts. We have the important battery message, also pretty standard for Apple, unfortunately. Let's see what else. Important display message, that should be the last one. After extensive testing, I did find some stuff. First off, I'd like to say that these phones are running iOS 17 and all of my findings are based on both phones running iOS 17. There may be some things that I have missed in this test to which I will keep you guys updated. Anyway, now that we got all of that out of the way, here's what I found. So all anti-repair measures Apple has taken prior are still there, including all the non-genuine messages like the face ID, the battery, the display, etc. The True Tone is still disabled. You'd have to reprogram it to get it onto a new display. Auto brightness also doesn't work. The flash issue we recently found with the iPhone 14 doesn't seem to be an issue on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. If we take a picture with the flash on, it saves to the camera roll as usual and there are no issues. I can say that I haven't seen any issues in swapping the back glass at all. The flash and wireless charger all seem to function as they should. Face ID only works with the original front camera as usual, but swapping other components doesn't seem to affect it. The five times zoom also still seems to work. We can still set the action button to do whatever we want with no issues, even though it's not the original action button. I also haven't found any issues with portrait mode or any other camera mode. The only issue I found was with the front camera. And well, this is kind of serious. Swapping front cameras seem to glitch out the entire camera app. Just check this out. If I head to camera and now I hit front camera, this will never load. I gave it a lot of time. Now the entire camera app is glitched out. This is nothing new. We saw this with the iPhone 14s 
and factory resetting the iPhone 14s solved this issue. So naturally, that's what I tried with this phone. We'll hit camera, and now we'll go to the front camera. So it appears to be working, right? But I can't take any pictures. This is a phone I factory reset and that worked with the 14, but it doesn't seem to be working with the 15 Pro Max. So what does this mean? Well, I'm not entirely sure yet. I have to share my findings with other repair shops before I come to a solid conclusion. What I can say though, is that if this is done purposefully on Apple's part, then it's bad, like very bad. Hopefully this is a glitch that Apple fixes in an upcoming update, but with Apple's track record, I have a hard time believing any bad thing that happens as a result of swapping parts is a glitch. Anyway guys, those are my findings. If I find anything else, I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. Hit that bell button so you don't miss the next video and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.